Hello, and welcome to the session two of the newly diagnosed webinar series. Within this session, we will be talking about various um, medication management options for inflammatory bowel disease. In this session, we will be talking about the goals of drug therapy, and we'll be, we will be talking about the different medication management options to um, decrease inflammation, but also to improve symptoms. We need to be clear that there is no cure for Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis, but uh, in conjunction with medications, your disease can be uh, relatively well controlled. Treatment is very individualized and so should be under the collaboration with your healthcare professional or GI specialist. Very globally, management of inflammatory bowel disease can occur within three overlapping categories, drugs, diet, and surgical and non-surgical options. And we're gonna be talking about the drug therapy options within this webinar session. Management of inflammatory bowel disease can include uh, those three categories overlapping and it really depends on the location and severity of the disease, any complications, and the individual's response to previous treatment. It can be quite frustrating when you're newly diagnosed to find the right medication that is, is right for you to keep your disease um, in remission or in control. What's important to remember uh, when we are talking about drug therapy is that all medications have side effects. So they have risks and benefits. So you need to um, talk about those uh, risks and benefits with your healthcare provider when you're making a decision on which medication to start on. The goal of drug therapy is to reduce and control that inflammation that is within the intestines, induce and maintain that remission, and to improve your quality of life. So our goal here is to make the disease or that inflammation inactive, or we also say in remission. We want to prevent any damage to the intestinal system and prevent any complications with the disease as well. Each person is different. So there's no one size fits all for medication treatment. Even though two people may have Crohn's disease, they may be on different medications that work well for them. So you and your doctor will decide what is right for you um, as to you know, what medication is the right one for you to try. And medication therapy really is a lifelong therapy. So if you, um, if, in order to maintain your disease um, being under control, you really need to be on medications through your life. So now we're going to be talking about drugs to decrease that inflammation. So there are four drug classes that we're going to be talking about uh, today. And we can use a combination of these drug classes. So you can be on two different drug classes for your inflammatory bowel disease, uh, or three perhaps. Uh, it just depends on the location and severity of your disease. And it really depends on individual factors. So what other medications have you tried? What's worked? What hasn't worked? And um, it, so it really just, it really just depends. It's very individualized. So we'll be going through them each individually, but if you have any questions about your medications, please talk to your healthcare provider or your pharmacy. So the first group of medications are the aminosalicylates. So examples of these would be the sulfasalazine, mesalamine. So these are the pentassa, acetyl, salafelc. These are used to treat mild to moderate inflammatory bowel disease and they can be used in combination with other medications from other drug classes that we're going to be talking about. They can be taken by mouth, so in pill form, or rectally as a, um, an enema. And these are a relatively low risk medication. Um, so the, the risks here um, are, are, are minimal as compared to the other medications but certainly all medications do have risks, but these, these, this, this is a relatively safe medication to take. The second set 
uh, or a class of medication are the steroids or the glucocorticoids. So examples would be uh, prednisone, hydrocortisone, and these medications work really well to decrease that inflammation quite quickly. So they, they, take, they, they don't take very long to kick in. You should be feeling some relief on steroids when you're on steroids um, quite quickly. But they are used for short-term therapy only because they do have quite a few side effects, uh, especially if you are taking them long-term. So please, um, you know, we, we generally don't see individuals who have inflammatory, inflammatory bowel disease on these medications for months to years. That's not, not usual therapy. The steroids can be used in combination with other medications from other drug classes. And what's really good about them is that they can be used to kind of put the fire out or decrease that inflammation quite quickly while other medications in another drug class kind of kick in. They can be taken by mouth in pill form or injection. But as I mentioned, they do have several, several risks. So your risk of infection increases while you're taking steroids. Uh, you might notice that you have more acne. Um, you might notice that your face is swelling. Uh, and long-term side effects can be things such as osteoporosis, glaucoma or cataracts, so eye troubles, and high blood pressure. Um, so certainly there are significant risks in taking these medications. So again, we don't usually see these, um, this group of medications um, being taken for a long period of time. And also, just, just a quick note here, um, do not st stop taking your steroids suddenly. So you will need to be weaned off of these medications. And your doctor or healthcare provider can, can guide you through that should you need to be um, used corticosteroids and be weaned off. The next set uh, of drugs are the immunomodulators. So examples of these are 6-MP, azathioprine, methotrexate, and these take a few months to kick in. So uh, if your healthcare provider would like you to start on immunomodulators, you might use something like steroids to um, to kind of put that, decrease that inflammation first off until the immune modulators start working. So they do take a while to build up within your system. These medications can be used in combination with other medications from other drug classes. And you will see um, immunomodulators being used for individuals who have moderate to severe IBD. They can be taken by mouth in pill form or injection. And the risks here are that there is an increased, small, but increased risk of infection, increased liver enzymes, so um, increased kind of trauma to your liver, and a very low risk of cancer, specifically um, lymphomas. So it's, it's important, again, to weigh the risks and benefits of each of these medications. You will uh, be asked to monitor bl uh, your blood work well, you won't be monitoring your blood work, obviously, but you will have to get blood work regularly, so your healthcare provider can monitor your blood work um, to keep an eye on on um, those that risk for infection and the risk of liver damage. So it's it's important just to make sure that you are uh, getting your blood work done regularly on these medications. And then finally, the last class of medications are the biologics and biosimilars. And there are examples here, so Remicade or Inflectra, Humira, Simzia, Saponi, Intivio. These are used for moderate to severe inflammatory bowel disease, and again, can be used in combination with other medications from other drug classes. They can be taken by injection, so into the fatty tissue of your body, uh, or intravenously through a vein, through an infusion clinic. And there are risks as well. So again, that small risk of infection and the very low risk of cancer. So it's important to, um, again, monitor that blood work on a regular basis. So you will be asked to do that if you decide um, that biologics or biosimilars are the best um, management option for you. And because of the risk of infection with both the immunomodulators and the biologics biosimilars, um, 
things like hand hygiene. So making sure you're washing your hands on a regular basis, making sure you're getting your yearly flu shots, your pneumonia vaccines um, are really important as well to keep you protected. In terms of uh, symptom management, there are a whole lot of other medications that you can use to manage your symptoms on a day-to-day -day basis. So I'm just going to briefly highlight them here on the next slide. So there's a whole, whole list. <laughs> um, so if you are having troubles with diarrhea, frequent diarrhea, um, and um, you need something to slow down your stools, there are medications that can help with that. So anti-diarrheals, but also bulk formers, so to bulk up, thicken up your stool. There are um, ointments and suppositories available. Uh, individuals who have IBD, they may have hemorrhoids, they may have swelling or itching or inflammation at the rectum and anus, and so those can help that inflamed tissue um, right at the, the anus. There are um, stool softeners. So if you are having quite constipated stools, stool softeners are an option. Uh, analgesics, so if you are having pain, um, you, there are, you know, there's, you can use Tylenol um, over the counter or opioids, very strong, strong uh, pain medication. So it just depends on your amount of pain that you are having. There are, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I missed antispasmodics. So oftentimes patients with IBD may have cramping or bowel spasms. And so um, antispasmodics can help relax those, those muscles to reduce that cramping. There are acid reducing medications. Um, sorry, uh, it says acid binding, but basically it'll help decrease the acid um, within your digestive system, so to prevent or relieve heartburn. And then there are vitamins and minerals. So with, with IBD, you may be at risk of for malnutrition. So a multivitamin, calcium supplements, um, vitamin D supplementation, vitamin B12 supplementation. So there are lots of options uh, available for vitamins and minerals. And um, your healthcare provider can look at your blood work and see if you are deficient in some of these uh, vitamins and minerals and, and provide you with recommendations for supplementation as well. So we've come to the end of the second session of newly diagnosed um, talking about the medication management options. Please visit the other sessions to learn more about other management options.